How to prepare your 2016 Cyprus tax return by cyprusaccountants.com.cy Let's go! First of all, we need to go to the Cyprus Income Tax Office, which we can find from the Google search by just typing Cyprus Income Tax Office. You should also always select this address here, the mof.gov.cy, which is the official web address for all Cyprus departments. We click on the tax department, we select forms, returns, and we go to the year 2016 where we will select the employee 2016 income tax return. So we are clicking here and we are ready to go. So this is the new 2016 tax return. I'm going to increase it a bit. Okay, what has changed is this addition here where effectively the income tax office asks us whether we have uh, any refundable tax or payable tax according to our own calculations which should be coming from page 5 of this return and below the income tax office requires us to fill in our bank account details. We need to be very careful here because if we do fill in our bank account details and we have a refund, yes, we will receive the refund directly into this bank account. Otherwise, if there is tax payable, it will get deducted from income from government projects that we might be engaged with. So this is one tip for you guys. Be careful before filling in this form because the Cyprus tax department might withdraw from you any taxes due prior to paying you. Moving down, the taxpayers' details, okay, everyone needs to fill in their names, surnames, addresses, etc. Taxpayers' classification, this is very important. Here you state whether you're a salaried person and representative details. Representative details are usually your accountants or the person who will prepare this tax return on your behalf. Here we put their TIC. If someone else is preparing this for you, don't bother about this because they will fill it in. Part 3, additional information, tax resident of the Cyprus Republic. This is crucial because if you are entitled to the tax benefits of Cyprus, it means you must have stayed in Cyprus for more than 183 days. So you need to click yes if you did spend more than 183 days in Cyprus in which case you will be considered as a tax resident in Cyprus and enjoy all the tax benefits of the Cyprus tax system. If you are not a tax resident in Cyprus but you are an overseas tax resident, maybe you need to still submit this form and by clicking this option no so that your overseas accountant will take this form and will combine your global income when he or she is preparing your local tax return. So this is very important guys, part three. Part four, income, salary services. This is standard like previous year's tax returns. You put here the TIC number of your employer, the name, the code, whether it's in the Republic or outside, the period of your employment, your emoluments, your gross salary, any tax withheld, etc. It's very important to know that you should always fill in this total row here in all sections, otherwise your tax returns may be rejected, especially if you're submitting them electronically. Another tax tip for you guys, especially if this is your first employment in Cyprus, this section A2 is crucial because you might be entitled to significant tax allowances, especially if you're a Russian, an Ukrainian, or an overseas individual who came to work in Cyprus for the first time. And whether you are highly paid or less high paid, Cyprus tax department has new incentives which could help your 2016 tax payable. So please contact us to make sure that you're not overpaying any taxes. Part B1, pensions, standardized pensions, 
This is, it affects social insurance pension for early redundancy. All these are taxed. Don't forget the row. And then we go up to part C, which is rent. It's important to know that um, an incentive given to take loans for the construction of buildings and who aim to rent out those buildings. The government has incentivized this procedure. And hence, this, this incentive is incorporated into this part of the tax return where the taxpayer has to fill in all this information about his property, the date of the completion, when it was in use, the cost, sees the rent details, etc. And below to fill in how much uh, rent he has been receiving. This is important because government will give you an incentive where you will pay tax based on the income you have earned, less the loan interest you have suffered and less any special defense tax. So when you fill this tax return across, make sure that you don't lose this tax benefit. Okay? Another important point for you to note here, capital allowances, 3% applies for industrial buildings and 4% for commercial buildings. Under preservation, this is tax-free. Again, please contact us because these things do change every now and then. Part E, interest receivable. Interest receivable, Again, you need to fill in the information from where you're getting this interest and whether any tax was deducted at source. Usually, the Cyprus banks pay you the interest net of the special defense tax. So, when you have received in your bank account 100 euros of interest, it means yours. Another point for you or another reminder for you is that interest received in Cyprus is only taxed at the special defense tax rate. So, whatever you get, in your bank account is yours. The bank withdraws the special defense tax, which for 2016, unfortunately, is high, is 30%. But other than that, that's it. That interest is yours. You're not going to include it in your tax computation because it's tax-free. If you want to include it, which is advisable, you will, but then you will, you will subtract it as it's not taxable. Dividends for Cyprus tax residents are taxed at 17% tax rate or for non-Cyprus tax residents these are tax free the same applies to non-domiciled individuals this is another tip for you if you are a wealthy person who has recently entered and wants to stay in Cyprus we can apply for the non-domiciled status which is a special status given to special clients who decide to use Cyprus as their tax residency. However, they, these people are tax residents in Cyprus, but they do not fall under the special defense tax rules. Hence, all their dividends are tax-free, all interest is tax-free. So these are very impact tax tips for you. Redemption of life insurance policies. Again, we fill in the forms of the life insurance. These are taxed if, they are, if the life insurance policies are broken or redeemed early earlier than three years. If they are later than three years, then they can fall under different brackets for tax reasons. Our tax tip here is hold on your life insurance policies for more than five years so that when you will redeem them, they will be tax-free. Any other income here, you fill in the forms. And again, it is on the last page of the tax return. So you fill in the form, the form here where you got this other income. Okay, this applies for the private sector. Usually people uh, from salaried services on the private sector leave this empty because nothing of this applies. If you're on the private sector, on your IR63 that you will get from your employer in March or early April, you need to fill this so that you won't get taxed twice. A crucial Part of the tax return is section K, where the income tax office asks you effect effectively to sum up all your taxable income. So add the income declared in parts 4A to 4I, except section G. So this is very important. Moving on, on part 4A, we need to fill in our monthly income for the year, subject to the instructions above. It's very important to comply with the instructions because they give it clearly demonstrate where each salary should be annotated and whether any contributions should be declared or not. 
For instance, on point two, it says contribution on the broader public sector are not declared, so you shouldn't put them in your salaries and wages. Similarly, if you have any 14th salary, the income tax office requires you to add it on the month of May and not uh, on, in December like the 13th. And the 13th salary, it's stated on its own. Again, don't forget the total row is very, very important to fill it. The total rows. Deductions and allowances, the income tax office requires you to fill in this section only if you have receipts from experience, they do not check if you have a total amount here that is up to 150 euros. So another tip for you guys is that you can fill in these forms, your contributions, your subscriptions, and if you don't have receipts for 150 euros, it's okay. The income tax office will not check it. However, it's always advisable to keep all your receipts and file them according to the year you are preparing your tax return. A general note here, the tidier you are with your tax affairs, the less tax you tend to pay. This is because your accountants will do a better job for you and this is because in the event of a dispute with the income tax office, you will have all the evidence to prove that you are right. If you are messy and if you don't keep any track or your records in a nice box file, then hey, how are you going to prove anything? Part C, again, we put the deductions for life insurance, premium, contributions, pensions, provident funds, etc. Whatever you do, make sure that the first row is completed. This is a significant tax deduction. And people tend to forget this. Social insurance deductions are deductions from your gross salary are also reducing your taxable amount of tax. So please, always fill this. Again, don't forget the total row and don't forget to insert commas. Moving on to the most to one of the most important pages of this uh, tax return is the tax computation where effectively you need to bring all the information you have filled in up to this point, put it in the right rows so that your totals agree and everything agrees and so that you can calculate your tax payable or refund here. Again, the tax office requires you to put in your bank account details for refunds. As I mentioned at the beginning, they could use this to deduct any taxes due to them. So think twice. Another important point or tax tip, as you say, here in the notes, it's a reminder of your tax brackets and your tax allowable income. So here up to 19,000 and a half, your tax is nil. There is no tax payable if you're earning up to 19,500 euros. They are on up to 28,000 gross income. You will be taxed 1,700 or at 20%. From 28,000 to 36,300, you will be taxed at 25% then up to 60,000 at 30 percent and more than 60,000 you'll be taxed at the huge rate of 35 percent. At this point it's crucial to consider whether you should establish a company and start invoicing because besides the legal benefits you get from using a company you also get significant tax benefits. When you fill in the form you fill in your name here, a signature that everything is correct. If you have prepared the form on your own, just click here that you would prepare it and not a professional, not an accountant. And if an accountant did it, then you need to put their TIC here, the tax identification code. And that's it. You print it together with your IR63 which is your salary details and it's a slip you, you take at the end of March or beginning of April from your employer, your life insurance receipts from your life insurance agency, which also sends you this information end of March or beginning of April, and any professional subscriptions or donations you have made to approve charities. So you file everything together and you do this before the end of April which is a deadline for the hard copy tax return submission. Thank you for listening and stay tuned.